face that this world has forgotten. Ooh, what is up you guys and welcome to another episode of Who Was Really Better. Before going into this episode, I do want to leave you guys with a small update on why I've been uploading this series. Uh, if you guys don't want to follow that, you can just be glad to know that this series is back on track and that there's a timestamp. Follow that if you want to see the episode itself. For everybody else, what's up? Uh, I just want to say as it is, um, the reason I've been uploading is because the edits behind episodes are taking so much time, and while they're really sloppy and easy to make, uh, they haven't been as easy to find the time to make these sloppy images, and I really just want to be very honest there and say that while it doesn't look like it takes a lot of time, because it necessarily doesn't, it means in relatively that I need to have roughly an hour to just do that and then do the recordings, which takes roughly an hour too. And I haven't really that time anymore. And since my daughter is growing older, stronger, getting mobility, things getting tougher. <laughs> it really is. So with that said, I have deemed down the episodes a little bit. They're, they're shorter and... Um, not as much edits on attacks. We're going to have still images as always, but not as many. And attack page are not going to be updated. We're going to talk about the Pokemon on screen. I'm going to talk about their attacks instead of actually showing them. Uh, I hope this works as well. If it doesn't, then of course I'll probably wrap up the series as it is because I really have said it. I can't find a time to pull this off, uh, at least not for the moment. But other than that, I really hope that I can showcase what I'm talking about anyway. So, with that said, thank you for listening to me, and of course, enjoy the episode itself. Ooh, what is up, guys? And of course, welcome to another episode of Who Was Really Better? And yeah, before, before my big hiatus, I did talk about two Pokemon I really want to cover that are primarily the same. Jardos versus Mega Jardos. Now, the thing is here with Jardos is that it's gone through emotions quite a lot. It started in Generation 1, not so good. Generation 2, not so good. Generation 3, things starts happening with Dragon Dance. Generation 4, it gets bounce, which really resolved one big issue. And of course, it could be physically active with Water Stamp. Generation 5 really pushes this to OU. And Generation 6 showcased the Mega Gyarados. Well, regular Gyarados was on par with Mega Gyarados, mainly because it changed the type of the Dark type making regular Gyarados filling a different role than, of course, Mega Variants. It didn't really come together till Generation 7, where C Moves Vector, C Flying Bounce was, of course, individually implemented into regular Gyarados, and now it is basically as strong as Mega Gyarados. It really is that, uh, while, of course, comparing a Mega Pokemon to a regular Pokemon, so the stats on the Mega form will be stronger, and we're going to talk about whether or not these extra stats really are well, better for the Pokemon himself, or if the regular form now as Generation 7 really are better. So yeah, that's basically the episode. Let's talk about the stats themselves first. So, first and foremost, as stated, Jaros will have a really, really good stats. It really wouldn't compare to Mega Form. Yeah, it's of course going to be weaker. Uh, stats that stands on regular Jaros to the Mega is of course his HP stats and its speed stats. Everything else is actually changed. But just as the regular Jarado stats goes, it's actually very formidable, a bit on the slow side possibly. So 95 in his HP, 125 attack, which is very strong. 79 defense, which is pretty average. Special attack that is unusable at 60. Special defense at 100, which is very fair. And of course 81 in speed, which is holding it back somewhat. But as stated, the same issue stands for the Mega Form, which gets a boost in his attack to 155 base, 30 in his defense to 109, and special defense also 30 boost to 130, which is insane actually. Special attack at 70, yeah, still unusable, but yeah, cool. And of course, the speed is the same at 81. So really, when it comes to stat wise, it is bulkier, so it's easier to set up for it, and of course, hits slightly harder. Stupid saying though that with item boost, Jaros will always hit hard on regular Jaros, or I mean Mega Jaros, which means Life Orb, Choice Band, stuff like that will always be more efficiently stronger. So, uh, what it comes down to here is, of course, the other things that deviated, but stat wise, Mega Jaros is most certainly better. So, the other thing that separates these two is, of course, their typing combination. Not many Mega Pokemons do change their typing completely, and Gyarados isn't necessarily doing that, but the core of the Pokemon itself does change. Uh, flying and Water is a very, very exclusive typing, really arguably four 
possibly five Pokemon with that combination, while of, of course Gyarados probably representing the best of that, Mantine close to, and of course Pelipper being relevant, and then we have Swanna, which people are forgetting, me too, honestly, but quite honestly, Flying Water, really good type combo. Uh, while it doesn't resolve anything water-wise, it really isn't. You do alleviate yourself of a grass weakness in exchange of an array of new weaknesses. But the flying combination really are parried by water very well. So we have a muting round. We resist bug, fighting, fire, steel, and of course water. We get a new weakness to rock. And we get another weakness which is very, very tough on it. Which is very weak to electric. However... It isn't that many type into, of course, before we parried against. Uh, we cannot talk about this before with a water ground typing or the bog steel type combination. That if you only have a few key differences to actually watch out for, you can actually alleviate yourself really well to make sure that your opposing Pokemon are forced to run individual move to be able to hit Gyro really super effectively. And since this bulk is really kind of good, it really is tough to take out. You really gotta hit that with the electric move, and well. The best Pokemon to do in that role is, of course, Electric Types, which is very easy to, of course, switch out against. Which makes Gyarados a very, very splashable Pokemon. And while it doesn't represent the defensive, bulky water type and elite comps that one might want, it does resolve a whole array of other things, and offensive water types are incredibly hard to deal with. And uh, Gyarados is, of course, the best one at that. Which makes it a very, very, very interesting Pokemon. However, the Mega Gyarados change things up a little bit and loses what I think is the most important aspect of Gyarados, and that is the flying typing. While it changed that for a dark typing, which is very good, uh, it does mean that this offensively threatening a whole lot more Pokemon, it does lose a small edge and actually being weak to something, it does resist quite nicely. That being resistive of a bug and fighting to actually become weak to that. That's always a bad thing. So the dark and water combo are not defensively alleviating anything against one another, but the stab combination offensively is much, much more threatening. Uh, so first and foremost, um, the immunities in Psychic is always nice. And uh, then we have the resistances in dark, fire, ghost, ice, steel, and water. So primarily, of course, we do get a loss in actually no longer a neutral ties to actually be resistant to it, which is really good offensively. It is something that is um, sorted in water types, and of course the flying type can kind of deviate from that. But as I said before, while we don't have anything we're super weak to no longer, we do have a lot of other things to watch out for. First and foremost, the grass weakness is back now, and we have the electric weakness which still was dead, just not as tough anymore, and then the bug fighting, and now fairy. So, straight off the bat, we changed two weaknesses for five, and for roughly the same type of resistances, I do believe Mega Gyarados do have more resistances, but at the same time, I had to watch out for a lot more hits. So it isn't as splashable as Mega Gyarados or as regular Gyarados, but at the same time, offensively, it is tougher to be dealing with. And uh, the only thing I could say that is kind of unfortunate is that Mega Gyarados doesn't get something like Pursuit. Uh, I do believe that would have helped this Pokemon quite a lot as his Mega Evolve. Other than that, Mega Gyarados defensively isn't as good, but has more key resistances. It just regular Gyarados has to watch out for less things in the matchup than regular, or of course, Mega Gyarados has to be doing. But of course, it isn't stopping there. Both of these Pokémon has abilities, and while Mega Gyarados could in theory be deemed as having these abilities, I do believe we're gonna judge them on their platform. So for what it is, regular Gyarados has the better abilities in Intimidate and Moxie, but as stated. Mega Gyarados before Mega Evolving can use his ability before changing it to Mole Breaker. For, so it should be said that though, Moxie is very, very good. Uh, Intimidate do kind of pressure a lot of matchups and does this very nicely. I do believe Moxie is great for the setup variant because this means that once you get a Dragon Dance off and faster most of the time than everything in the team, you can just steamroll and snowball a team very easily with Moxie because all of a sudden there really aren't anything that survives anything anymore. B and plus one, and then KO something B plus two. Yeah, this is the Ultra Beast before Ultra Beast was introduced, and I do believe the Mox represents the best of that. Uh, Mole Breaker, however, is an ability I think I should at least um, appreciate more than I'm saying, because offensively, as stated before, Jaros is fairly good. Uh, being able to actually push something like Solid Rock, Prism Armor, with, of course, the Crunch in mind, 
uh, really is something that a few Pokemon can do. It, all of a sudden, this is a Pokemon you can want to kill in a Crossma. I do believe there aren't really that many Pokemon can do that. And uh, Mega Gyarados does it kind of effortlessly. And of course, Mole Breaker do negate Levitate, which means Earthquake will quake. Uh, Rotom Wash has nothing on this Pokemon. And this is, of course, one of the main many reasons Mega Gyarados fill a very strong offensive wall break niche in any team. And of course, the Dragon has in mind, yeah, this is a Pokemon you can do fairly alright. So ability-wise, while I say Gyarados is better, Mega Gyarados ability really aren't bad and nothing like that. It's just that I think Gyarados' regular ability and the way it is utilized really is something that I think can bring more complexity to the team than, of course, the Mold Breaker can. But as tenant, none of these abilities are bad, it's just a personal preference at best. So what we got left now is, of course, the move pulls themselves. And, well, since they aren't changing in between them, we can just kind of cover them as they are, so we'll do just that. Straight off the bat though, when it comes to Gyro's uh, level up moves, the only things that are relevant here is Ice Fang, we have um, Hurricane, Dragon Dance, Crunch, and Aqua Tail, all of them being really relevant. Dragon Dance is of course the one standing out the most. When it comes to Tia move, it has a lot of move pulls that is, well, usable, but aren't necessarily that effective. It gets the Thunderbolt Thunder, we have Earthquake, which is really good, the Flamethrower Fire Blast combination, to get it with Ice Beam Blizzard, and as stated, while it isn't the strongest on it, since they have a bad special attack, just having the filler moves as such is very important. It also gets Scald and actually Surf, and it has one of the few flying types that gets access to Stone Edge, which is really nice, uh, and also of course Waterfall, which is probably one of the, its better physical moves, mainly because it's 100% accurate. It doesn't get Liquidation, which I think is unfortunate, but uh, then again, Waterfall is almost just as good. When it comes to the Mewtwo moves, we have Iron Head, we have Bounce, which is something that really are alleviating a lot of problems for regular Gyarados since it gets a proper flying stab, and it is its only flying stab. We also have Icy Wind, Dragon Pulse, Iron Tail, Water Pulse, and Outrage. And Outrage makes sense, right? It really is a Pokemon that is close to it. should have been a Dragon type in somewhere down there, I kind of get that. Uh, pre evolutions move, the only thing worth mentioning is Splash, is because of the C move Splash, making your plus 3 always nice. And when it comes to TM side, really aren't that many things to mention. However, I do kind of want to cover some of these. Uh, Endure, always nice. Um, definitely a good way to kind of activate your possible weakness policy. Though it can can be it can be combined with uh, Moxie due to be enough generation full move. Avalanche, which is always nice if you don't want to relevate yourself for Ice Fang. And we have Body Slam, Double Edge, Curse, Sap Cannon. For some reason, it really is for some reason and Reflect. But overall, though the move pool isn't necessarily the most vast, it is still one of those move pools that are very relevant. Flying and water combination with ground combination is a very, very good thing to have. And of course, uh, with Crunch in mind, uh, also Mega Gyarados get a proper stab in mind. Also has Bite, which was in the first, um, in, uh, what do you call it? Um, it's got not Sun and Moon, but X and Y. There we go, generation 4, 6. <laughs> Where uh, it actually only had Bite as his main stab, which made Mega Gyarados worse. But once it gets crunched, things kind of start to resolve itself. Though it should be stated, as I said before, not having Pursuit is something I think is holding the regular or the Mega Gyarados down. But also, of course, the regular Gyarados, but they affect more with stab in mind with the Mega Gyarados. But overall, um, the C moves is something that made the regular Gyarados more physically active I should say, where a lot of things that kind of alleviates themselves and actually broaden out the move pool quite a lot. Um, and what this dialogue basically boils down to when it comes to which one of these two really are better, I think it comes down to personal preference and I are so close to make a tie between these two because the mega form are actually remaining the issues that the actual regular form has, which is its speed tier. 81 base speed really isn't good for a physically active Pokemon, for one that is supposed to be threatening. And both of these Pokemon are very bulky and are able to most of the time set up. And even though the Mega Gyarados is bulkier, it has more weaknesses to watch out for. Regular Gyarados has key weaknesses it has to watch out for. If you can predict that right, you can actually very freely set up and with C move in mind, you can hit something very hard. Bounce with C move really makes the 85 base attack to a 160 base attack plus stab. That means one, I was going to say 240. Um, that, that's dangerous, folks. It really is. And of course, Moxie get activated in that accident. And then that all of a sudden, we have an unstoppable train. 
Uh, I do believe both these Pokemon are able to do the same thing, I just think the regular Gyarados are better at doing this thing, which is sweeping, setting up, and just being a very, very tough Pokemon head-on to deal with. It has a better defensive typing, while worse stats, I think overall it does a better job than Mega Gyarados as doing very well. The only reason I can say that Mega Gyarados is a more consistent OU threat than regular Gyarados is because of the Pokemon in OU that are good, which is very, very high speed, psychic type, and of course the Latias and the Mega Latias and the Alka Sams and whatnot. I think this Pokemon and does force them out much, much better than regular Gyarados, but I think overall they pressure pretty much the same things, and I think regular Gyarados has more setup opportunities than the Mega Gyarados, which, in my honest opinion, makes it better between these two. But as I said there, this could basically be a tie, because they are just as good. I, I really think it's very interesting to see that this is one of the few Pokemons that, due to the introduction of sea moves, that all of a sudden they become on par with one another, and it really is a type change and a small stat boost that really are separating these two, of course, as any Mega Pokemon, but changing the typing, change the meta game for the Pokemons himself, and that's interesting. I definitely appreciate stuff like that. Uh, I think stuff like that kind of helps out when it comes to the matchups themselves, and just overall, uh, knowing that the Mega form isn't, in theory, that much better than the regular form is something that I think is very rare. Usually, the, the mentality of a Pokemon itself really is get, get raised by a whole lot to the bar, between these two, there really aren't that much much changing, and then I think that's very interesting. Uh, but as I said here, this Seamu really is something that is changing the function of the Pokemon itself. Uh, the Mega Evolution really did make Gyarados better, it's just the Seamu made the regular Gyarados a lot better too. So, yeah, I think it's cool, I think it's very interesting, and um, I really hope you guys can appreciate that. While I'm making the regular Gyarados better, in my honest opinion, I can definitely see easily the other side of the argument of why Mega Gyarados would be even better. It really comes down, as I said, to a personal preference. And for me, regular Gyarados, due to having easier times of setting up, and um, they still have the same problem with their speeds here, that is very easy for me to just pinpoint that. If their main functions are roughly the same, then it really comes down to which one threatens the most, and I think regular Gyarados are better doing just that. So, with that, guys, thank you all for watching, and welcome back to the series, and of course, join us next week for this very cool matchup.